Hi everyone, and this is King Crosby, and this is Properties and Materials Lesson 7, Jelly Bean Engineer. Activity 1 is different amounts, same properties. So we've been investigating this question. How can properties of a mixture change? What is one way you can change the properties of a mixture? Let's think about what you remember for our, our investigation. Do you remember one way you can change the properties of the mixture? I'm sure you said you can add a new ingredient, such as water. So let's look at different amounts of the same glue. Does the glue on these two index cards have the same properties? It is the same glue. It's the same substance, and having a small amount or a large amount of glue doesn't change the properties of glue. Now let's look at this piece torn off paper. Does a small piece of paper have the same properties as a large sheet of paper? Well, the piece of paper that's been torn off the big sheet has the same properties as a big sheet of paper. It's the same substance, and it's true for paper as it was true for glue, and for any substance for that matter. So here's our key concept. Properties of substances are the same whether you have a small amount or a large amount. Activity two, making predictions. What do you think a jelly bean engineer does? Well, we've been making predictions with our first book, so let's make predictions about this book. And remember, predictions are not just guesses. They're based on what we already know and the evidence we gather. The title of this book is Jelly Bean Engineer, written by Gina Cervetti. What do you think a jelly bean engineer does? Well, let's read and find out. So on page three in the Jelly Bean Engineer, the book does not have chapters. It has a table of contents and tells us what the headings of the book will be. The book has two parts and a glossary. The first part is visiting a food engineer. And under this heading, this is what a food engineer does. And how are new jelly bean flavors made? And why test jelly beans? The second part of the book is more about the jelly beans. And lastly, there's that glossary, which will give us definitions to vocabulary words that are bolded in this book. So let's look through the book and think about the headings and pictures, what they can tell us. Captions are short explanations of images, and they could be one word up to a few sentences. And headings and pictures and captions are all text features. Let's use the text features from Jelly Bean Engineer to predict what the book will be about. Hmm, what do you think you'll learn? From the title of the book and the pictures, I think this book is going to be about how jelly beans are made and what they're made of. Part one, visiting a food engineer. What is a food engineer? It says, Ambrose Lee is a food engineer and engineers think of new ways to make things. That's called designing. Ambrose's job is to design new flavors of jelly beans. Ambrose knows a lot about jelly beans. He has been designing jelly beans for more than 20 years. Ambrose has helped to design some surprising flavors like hot pepper and dirt. And under the picture, it says, the caption says, Ambrose Lee designs jelly bean flavors. So far, my prediction was right. I thought it was going to be about how jelly beans were made and their ingredients. Since we're reading about flavors, it looks like we might learn about some of the ingredients that food engineers put into jelly beans. Activity three, reading Jelly Bean Engineer. Now let's read Jelly Bean Engineer together. And since you don't have the book at home, you can follow along as I read. Here's that cover again. Jelly Bean Engineer, written by Gina Cervetti. Let's make sure to check and adjust our predictions as we go along. We've been investigating how the properties of mixtures can change. Well, we just read about how Jelly Bean Engineers make mixtures. Let's read part one of the book again and think about what made the properties of some Jelly Bean Mixtures change to be different from others. Part one, visiting a food engineer. Hmm says, what is a food engineer? Ambrose Lee is a food engineer. Engineers think of new ways to make things. That's called designing. Ambrose's job is to design new flavors of jelly beans. 
Ambrose knows a lot about jelly beans. He has been designing jelly bean flavors for more than 20 years. Ambrose has helped design some surprising flavors like hot pepper and dirt. Food engineers use science to design new kinds of food. They have design goals for the foods they make. They may want to make the food taste better. They may want to make it last longer, and they may want to make it better for people. Food engineers may have many design goals. Food engineers need to know a lot about science. They need to know about the different substances in food. Ambrose studied for years to become a food engineer. So what kind of things do food engineers need to know in order to design new jelly beans? Well, let's go back to page six. It says that food engineers need to know a lot about science. They also need to know about the different substances in food. Okay, well, let's go to the next page. It says, how are new jelly bean flavors made? Ambrose works with a team of food engineers. He likes working with a team. Ambrose and his team work together to design flavors. The engineers mostly use natural flavors. They want the jelly bean flavors to taste real. They use oils from real limes to flavor lime jelly beans. Plum jelly beans have flavor from real plums. Go to page eight. Sometimes the engineers can't use natural flavors. In that case, they try to copy the natural flavors. First, they use machines to study what makes up the real food. Then they try to design the same flavor using other ingredients. They test different ingredients to find the right recipe. Ambrose's team wanted to make grass flavor jelly beans. Grass isn't safe for people to eat, though. The engineers used other ingredients to copy the flavor of grass. They made jelly beans that smell and taste like grass. Sometimes flavors are made in surprising ways. Ambrose's team tried to make a pizza jelly bean they use cheese and meat flavors. They thought it would taste like pizza, but the cheese and meat flavors tasted bad in a jelly bean. The engineers gave this jelly bean flavor a new name. They called it vomit flavor. New jelly bean flavors need to have more than just the right taste. The jelly bean should feel right too. Some jelly beans should be soft and others should be harder. The engineers can change the feel of a jelly bean. They do it by changing the ingredients. The engineers add different ingredients to make a bean softer or harder. Machines help the engineers test the jelly beans. Machines can tell whether the mixture has the right ingredients. Still, machines can't tell how something will taste and smell to a real person. The engineers test with their own senses too. They test the jelly beans themselves they also look closely at them, smell them, and feel them. Ambrose and his team design about 10 new flavors every year. What jelly bean flavors would you design? So how do jelly bean engineers test the properties of the jelly beans? I bet you said they use their senses, smell, taste, and feel, right? Well, they use machines too to make sure the mixture has the right ingredients. And why do the jelly bean engineers test the jelly beans over and over? Well, let's see, it says to make sure that they taste right and to know if they need to change the ingredients. And what are some of the properties of different jelly beans that are described? Hmm, some, some things, oh yeah, there it is. It says some are soft, some are hard, some taste like grass, vomit, strawberry. Part two says more about jelly beans. How are jelly beans made? People make the centers of jelly beans first. They use a recipe of cornstarch, sugar, corn syrup, and flavors. They cook the mixture in a big machine. The caption on this picture says, this man is adding flavor to the jelly bean mixture. Jelly beans are made of cornstarch and a few other ingredients. We tested cornstarch for our glue. The same ingredients mixed in different ways can make different mixtures. Scientists often investigate things in nature, like animals and plants. Engineers 
often solve problems involving substances like foods. You might become a scientist or engineer who investigates things in nature or investigates substances and makes things to solve problems. Activity four, reflecting on vocabulary in the book. Let's review some of the important words in the book. First, let's think about the word design. So to design is to think of a way to make something. Engineers design things for a particular use. Ambrose designs new flavors of candy for people to eat. Food engineers like Ambrose design flavors. So what are some of the other things that people can design? I'm thinking glue, ink, toothpaste, medicines. Did you think cars, computers? And what are you designing as a student engineer? Um, yeah, a new glue for our school. So design is another word that we use in everyday language to mean something else. But it has a special meaning that makes it important for doing science or engineering. Remember, in engineering, to test means to try something out. So when engineers test something, they may want to see how its properties compare to the properties that they are looking for. Why test jelly beans, it says. Ambrose and his team always test their new jelly bean flavors. They need to see if the jelly beans meet their design goals. The engineers want the jelly beans to have all the right properties. The jelly beans should have the right taste, color, feel, and smell. Now let's look on page 14 of the book. How do these engineers use their senses to test? Well, let's see, they made jelly beans, taste jelly beans, look closely at them, they smell them, and they touch them. And how have we done tests so far? Well, we together made mixtures with glue ingredients and water. We let the pasta dry in each mixture, and then we shook them to see which was the stickiest. Activity five is learning about the design cycle. What process did Ambrose use to design jelly beans? Well, Ambrose studied for many years. He worked with a team to design new flavors. He tested a lot of different ingredients. He mixed ingredients together to find the right flavor and texture. Sometimes the jelly bean flavors didn't turn out as he expected, but he had to try again. And what have we done so far in this unit that is similar to the work that a jelly bean engineer does when designing new things? We have observed different glues. We've been learning about properties of glue. We have also been testing ingredients to see which ones would make the best glue. Here you see a design cycle poster. A cycle is a series of events that happens over and over again. Engineers follow the steps of the design cycle. The design cycle has already helped us as we design our glue. Let's review all the steps. There's learn, plan, make, and then test. Engineers need to learn a lot, and then they plan. After engineers create a plan for what they are designing, they need to make it. Then they test it. When engineers design something, they need to learn as much as possible about what they're designing and its purpose. They also need to learn about the materials they are working with and what is available to them. A design may not meet the design goals at first. Engineers often have to go back to the learn phase, the very top, to learn more about the materials and adjust their plans. What is the design goal for our glue project? Well, we need to know that the glue must be sticky. What can we do to find out whether our glue meets the design goal? Well, we need to try the sticky test, try different types of sticky tests. How did Ambrose know whether his jelly beans met his design goals? Well, he tested them. So the key concept is that engineers test their designs to find out whether they meet their design goals. Again, what is their design goal for this glue? Yep. The glue must be sticky. Engineers often have to go back through the design cycle and redesign their solutions. Engineers are always thinking of the design goals. 
We're going to continue moving through the design cycle as we work on designing a good glue. In the next lesson, we'll get a chance to use the evidence we've gathered to write a plan for our glue. Hope you enjoyed reading Jellybean Engineer with me. See you all next time.